And we're back for another exciting episode of the Creators Collective. This week will be a very interesting week as we are going to have just a normal week on here. Should be kind of fun. <laughs> I do want to say a huge thank you to our patrons of Patreon on Patreon, uh, particularly Darren Mates, uh, Caleb Harris, uh, you can make this too, uh, and uh, our newest uh, Judith Grass. Thank you for that. You're helping us uh, helping us grow and become better. Now, if only you could fix my mouth so that I don't stumble over myself. <laughs> Yeah, you can listen to us anytime on iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, wherever you uh, listen to your podcasts. But we do record live every Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. And we record that on the YouTube channel, Creators Collective. So if you join us there, you can join, excuse me, you can join the live chat. And we do pull most of our questions from the live chat. So I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what they have to say. So let's actually jump into this. Uh, Zach, what you got? What you working on? Um, right now, I'm working on entering all of the tracking numbers from my post office run yesterday. Ooh. It's Wait. A big one. You take all your stuff to the post office now? Yeah, it's Florida. Why don't you just like do it online and have them all print out? Um, I don't so you know. don't have to do any of the tracking number. It automatically emails it to people. Because I'm a Luddite, <laughs> and this is what I know, and I'm not willing to do anything new ever. <laughs> They have these things um, uh, called computers, you know. You know, I'm I'm really waiting to, to figure out technology until I move. Uh, <laughs> and, and it's like I still don't I don't have any like stamps or stickers with my address on them. Yeah. Uh, because I'm waiting until I move. Uh, <laughs> so I have to like write everything out and as printing another sheet of those is a pain. Good yeah. use of the word Luddite, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Have you guys ever heard that song? Uh by the Word. Uh, no. I'm a Luddite. Oh. It sounds uh, like a good Weird Al song. Let's see. <laughs> so, what else is new? What did I do this week? Um, you forged that massive hammer. Thing. Oh yeah, yeah. I forged. Well, so I had a whole bunch of orders that I needed to catch up on after getting back from work, MatchCon. So I've been going nonstop. I think I. I think I finished out seven hammers and four of them were for myself, which is super exciting because I haven't <laughs> made anything for myself for a long time. And as, as my, my skills grow and what I want to do um, becomes more ambitious, I need more tooling to do those things. So um, it's funny. That's like, that's like my, 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 uh, my break. Cause you know, <clears throat> Like I always tell myself, I'm like, man, I'm going to take a half day or I'm going to take a day off or something like that. And then like, I'll try and do that. And like an hour into it, I'm like, this is dumb. I want to just go like do something for myself in the shop. Like that's to me, that's a day off, like a no pressure day <laughs> yeah. in the shop where I get to build stuff for myself. And uh, so I did that and I made four tools for myself that I've needed for a long time. And one of those tools is a six pound sledgehammer. And I got a little bit carried away with it. It's on my Instagram. If anybody's curious, I should have like put a quarter or something in the picture to, to show scale. Cause you can't <laughs> tell how big it is, but it's gigantic. I, I love the Batman references on the top. Oh yeah. Um, just, uh, I, it wasn't necessarily Batman, but, uh, yeah, yeah. It was kind of fun. Some fun embellishments on the top there. But, uh, so that's, yeah, I did that and made some, some, uh, other tooling that I needed for myself and then this was like the other day I was like, okay, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do, I'm going to take a half day and it dropped down to the, to the mid fifties here, which is great. And I'm like, man, I need to take advantage of this. So I just went out in the shop and I've had so many messages on Instagram for some reason. It's like claw hammer season. Everybody wants claw hammers and I haven't even gotten back to everybody uh, yet, but so I just went out into the shop and I roughed out four claw hammers uh, a couple of days ago. So I need to finish those out. Um, yeah, just been, just been working nonstop and it's, it's actually been nice. I was happy to be able to do some things for myself. Um, yeah, we had a huge post office run yesterday. I had those, um, uh, these diner mugs that I had made. I can't remember if I know. Sorry, you're out of the microphone. Oh, what was that? These, these fancy diner mugs that I had made, uh -huh. these hand-thrown ones. I had a ton of orders for those. 
And then I realized after going to the post office and mailing like 20 of them out that I am not making any, I think I'm losing like 20 cents on each cup that I sell. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I just want to keep it where it is. Um, cause the, the issue is, is it's like, I don't, so this company, I had to order like 48 at a time and it was 490 bucks for 48 oh. coffee mugs. Um, and then like the boxes I get from Amazon, they're six by six by six, which is small, but volume wise, it's actually quite a bit since it's cubic. And I didn't realize that until those are, those cost about a dollar each. And then the post office is anywhere from about $11 to $14 to ship them. So I am Oof. right at 24 to $25, which is exactly what I sell them for on my website. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I want to, like, I'm not trying, like, I don't try and make money off my merch. Like I, I sell like the really nice shirts and I sell them for 20 bucks. I usually, I think I make a dollar or two on those, but, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm, I'm happy just to have people using my stuff and I think there's a value in, you know, having my name in front of people's faces every day of the week. So literally in front of their faces, like as they yes. drink coffee, <laughs> I want I, put, put me in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that's that should be the slogan on the other side of the coffee cup i don't know <laughs> how's the house hunting going? Uh, um you know we we've kind of we've kind of backed off the house hunting because it's premature until we get a job we've opened mm. up our horizons there's so many my wife has so many interviews and leads and things and um yeah, it's it's just a matter of getting a reasonable job offer and taking that to the bank, and then once once she gets an offer, then we can start looking for houses. Um, so she's she's got a lot of things on the plate. We're we're still right now we're honed in on you know Eugene or or Portland, um, somewhere in Oregon is kind of the goal, possibly like Vancouver, Washington, but somewhere close to Oregon. We just like it out there. But uh, yeah, it's it's um it's stressful. <laughs> It sucks because <laughs> we are we are ready to ready to to move on I, I need a bigger shop um there's a lot of projects that i want to do that i can't do in my shop i just literally physically cannot do these ideas in my shop so it's kind of kind of a bummer <clears throat> but uh hopefully soon oh cool. and uh i officially I haven't officially announced it, but I told uh, NZ Nick Zametti, I think the NZ woodworker, that uh, I'm going to be attending Makers Central. So a lot of people are asking. I'm just going to do it because um, I have, I don't know, I'm, I'm losing faith in being moved out in a super timely fashion. So. <laughs> and I figure also as soon as I book something, just you know murphy's law now that i've committed the this fundage in this time period to go to england i'm sure uh, tracy's going to get a job offer or something in the exact same time period so i'm gonna i'm gonna try and i'm gonna try and leverage murphy's law to my advantage <laughs> <laughs> like that's, screw that's, england i'm going to portland yeah that's, so this is kind of my strategy that's been my strategy on life for a long time is I'll just, you know, try and schedule conflicting events that I really want to happen. And worst case scenario, one of them always works out because then it screws me out of the other one. Um, but no, I'm, I'm going to go to Maker Central regardless. So everything else is, even if even if something comes up, we'll just have to reschedule that. So I'll I'd have there. to do a combined meetup of uh, ZH Fabrication Wood by Right podcast. Yeah, you're going? Yeah, oh, yeah Sarah cool. and I'll both be there. Very cool. I cool. need to have one in Russia. Like those are the only people that watch my watch my content are Russians. They love me. <laughs> I get a lot of that on my table video. Yeah, it's it's really weird. Cool. Well, Will, what you got? Oh, baby. Literally, baby. Uh, so <laughs> a week from today, uh, probably gonna have a baby. Um, oh wow! Like personally, but my wife. Did you say uh, a week from today? Oh, wow. From today. Yeah. And so it's not like anything around, but my wife is actually getting induced. Uh, and so it's like, I'm going to wake up on Thursday. She's going to call the, the 
you know, doctor's office and say, like, hey, am I having a baby today? <laughs> and there it is. Or, yeah, come on down and we'll get that baby out of you. Uh, <laughs> so that's, you know, on the front of my mind. I wonder, um, I wonder if then, we got, do you guys know those, those little megaphone things that like scramble your voice and turn it into a robot? <laughs> Do you guys know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I wonder uh, if we get you to actually talk into one of those, if it will descramble like it, and you'll sound normal coming oh, out. Oh, no. James said I was sounding good. Am I sounding You were until again? just now. <laughs> ah, ah, come on. Uh, yeah, kind of like, you know, two, two negatives make a positive. Yeah, 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 you can, really you can right scramble now. it, and then maybe, like, the, you know, it'll, it'll automatically unconvert it. I don't know. Uh, all right. so all right. Do I sound totally crappy, or do I need to change internet? It's pretty. Yeah, why don't you change internet? Okay. I'll talk about my stuff, and then Give you can me. come back. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, this this week I put out one of those videos that I always hate to put out, but I I needed to, and that was the the fail video because I was I was making a um I was making a spill plane, which is a very it's it. it as hand planes go, it's just about as complicated as they get because it is skewed and weird angles. Um, so the the wedge that goes into it is skewed. So you take the wedge and you kind of slant it to the side, and then you have to put a, a second compound angle on it. Um, and it's very difficult to wrap your brain around and cut it all by hand. And so I ended up making three attempts for the wedge, finally got the wedge, and then I had to drill. The very last step is drilling a hole through to create a curvature in the bottom of the wedge and I drilled the hole in the wrong place uh -oh. and in doing so messed up the plane body and the wedge so basically the whole thing from that point was scrap and uh, it was just totally torn apart and we spent the entire day videoing this thing and so it was basically <clears throat> lost footage unless I would put out a video about how I failed um, and it was actually pretty good I I'm, I'm glad that I did that uh, it's always a it's always painful when you when you have to put an entire video into oops I failed as opposed to just showing one step of it and then because what I would like to do is actually then show going back and and doing it again and putting it all into one video, but uh, that was not in the option. So if you want to see me uh, totally mess up, it's it's live on YouTube. <laughs> but I'm going to go back and do another one here soon. Uh, it's a, a fun plane to play with. H have you ever you played luck. with the spill plane? I've not. No. Either of you? Oh, they're they're really cool. A, a right. worthless plane can, now, but uh, a lot of fun. Can you hear me now? Am I? Yes. Ooh, yeah. Uh, all right. Okay. Cool. <laughs> no, I've not played this real plane, but they look cool. I didn't even know what one was until on them, and I was like, "Oh, that's pretty cool." Yeah, they're they're enjoyable to use, though. I haven't found a way to actually use them for anything. <laughs> Other than making spills. You don't have candles? Yeah, yeah. I don't have a pipe to light or anything like that. Yeah. <clears throat> cool. uh, now, let's see. The cool. other thing I've got so, was a I, I was doing a tusked tenons this week, um, which are a really fun. It's a through tenon joint, and then you put a, a, tu a tusk or a wedge in the tenon that sticks out the other side. Uh, it's designed for, like, knockdown furniture, but as joinery goes, it's just about as old as they get because you'll find this in Egyptian Egyptian joinery and earlier. Um, it's, I mean, mortise and tenon is basic, but if you want to stop the mortise and tenon from coming apart and you haven't figured out glue yet, you put a pin in it. And it's actually older to do a tusk pin than it is to put a pin through both pieces of the joint. So it's kind of a, a cool thing. I did one of those. So I noticed. Back. <clears throat> Go ahead. Oh, so I noticed um, the wedge on your tusk tenon. Uh, I just saw the the screenshot, but I didn't actually watch the video. Uh, it looked like a pretty steep angle on that wedge. It, was it not? Um, as in acute? Well, or... as in no, as in a, like, um, like a steep. Like it looked like you know it should have been a. You know, if it was, it should have been maybe 20 degrees instead of, you know, 35 degrees or something like uh, that. No, it's, uh, 
this is at like uh, 15 degrees or so. It's um, it's a one to eight okay. that comes out. Um, okay, so but, it's a dovetail. Yeah, I mean, there okay. there is no there is no right or wrong to what the angle is because the the more acute you make the angle, the more force you can put into the joint, but it also makes it much right. harder to take apart. Um, and so if it's something you're going to be taking apart and right. putting I guess together a lot, what... you actually want a fairly um, wide angle on there. Um, yeah, I guess I was thinking more along the lines of like a dining table with a tusk tenon mm -hmm. that's recently that's very popular. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, then you want to very where you're not. Angle. Yeah, yeah, because you're not really taking that apart, and it's more for aesthetics than. Yeah, you know. yeah. If you look at a lot of the old uh, knockdown furniture, like uh, um, campaign furniture, they have very wide angles on there so that they can pop them in and out by hand. Yeah, like the Moravian. Uh, no, like Moravian. Uh, um, the Moravians actually are pretty pretty shallow because they're more tended to be set there. But like uh, um, okay. campaign furniture, like what would be for mm -hmm. military um, military use, those are, are fairly big. Right. But then you get into things like mm -hmm. the arts and crafts, um, and they like a very, very shallow angle. Um, it's almost a pin, but just enough so it doesn't slide out the bottom. Yeah. Like if you look at it, green and green. Yeah. Green, and they do like the pillowed tusk tenon. Yeah. Yeah. I'm alive. <laughs> I'm so what else do you got, Will? For a minute. Okay, so uh, the baby's on the way, and that's like mind blowing. Um, I put this week. I know, shocking uh, that I put out two videos in one week. Uh, one was basically a, a, it was a new series that I started, just called Two Minute Tool Tip, and it's not actually two minutes. And everyone, let me know how stupid that was. Is <laughs> in. Uh, um, to be like a quick overview of a tool, like maybe something that, uh, you know, just to demystify things for people and do it quickly. Uh, so I did one on the card scraper, just on how to set up a straight out of the box, mm -hmm. uh, really. Uh, and people seem to really like that. And, you know, there's always a couple haters like, oh, sandpaper's great, but, um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and then and the other video that I did was on turning a bowl, uh, and I actually mentioned Zach, Zach, I mentioned you in the video, and I Whoa. mentioned you and Paul, and Ashley, and Dan, uh, Ashley Harwood, and Dan Tilden, uh, wow. talking about how I just got back from work, Workbench Con, and I was, like, super pumped and inspired, and I talked about, you guys' talk about, you know, fuck the formula, sorry, uh, anyone listening that doesn't like curse words, but that's what the session was called. Uh, and uh, then meeting Ashley and Dan inspired to, to be better at turning. Um, the tool finish off of one of Ashley's bowls was uh, just insane. Uh, and so I was like, well, I, I want to do that. Uh, and then I actually put it up for auction on Instagram, and that ends tomorrow at 1 p.m. And the bowl is currently the highest bid is for $110. Uh, so that I feel like that was a pretty good good return on on my time doing that. That felt pretty good. Man, sorry to interrupt, but the reason I had to walk away a minute ago is because my dad came over. He had to do something in my shop, and <laughs> I literally he always comes over with like epoxy stuff and uses my big six by forty eight grinder or sander. I just put a new belt on it yesterday, and I can hear him. <laughs> I can hear him sanding <laughs> epoxy on this brand new know. six by 48 belt right now which just instantly ruins it uh just gums uh, it up do you have one of those rubber uh like D yeah they, I, i'd say they thing? they work half as good as everybody thinks they do they work great for wood not as much for epoxy epoxy just epoxy ruins yeah. everything including agreed tools. and youtube <laughs> yeah <laughs> it ruins youtube yeah, no, it like anything, especially like even bandsaw, like use like cutting it on the bandsaw, especially if you have like the polyurethane uh, tires oh, on yeah. the wheels, it just like mm -hmm. it like uh, it instantly like bonds itself to that wheel and your tracking goes to crap and then you're it's just it just it's just bad. It's bad stuff. Tell him to get his own sander. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, Cool. Yeah, sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, and also working with some sponsors. Um, I brought on two new sponsors, uh, and I'm working on a sponsor. 
sponsored project right now. Um, so Merka, a company yes. from Finland. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they just came on as a sponsor. I'm so stoked for that. Um, so uh, I'm about to get a five inch Merka Deros and extractor in my shop. And I am like really excited. I would, I would totally try. And things- hit, yeah. I would totally try and hit them up, but I, I work with another abrasives company and uh, not that the abrasives company that I work with isn't fantastic. It's uh fared abrasives. Um, yeah. They make really nice stuff, but uh, they don't do the five, like the, the five inch orbital sander discs. Oh yeah. And Mer- those, like I have all, I have, I use those a lot for my hammer polishing stuff, like the first few steps. And I've used the Diablo ones. I've used all these other brands and I will, I, I, I gotta give it to Merca. Like I don't, whenever I remember, I, I buy that stuff from Amazon because it's just so much better than the, than the, the Diablo stuff. The, the Abernet stuff. Uh, it's just like the yellow pads. I think it's their Merca gold or something. I, I can't okay. remember what they call it, but just their basic like five inch, uh, sanding disc for the orbital sander they just they just work so much better than like the i don't know why or how but they just they get better results with them that's all yeah so good work so merca you <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so merca um i just got the invincibles x carve it's still sitting in the back of my truck uh that showed up yesterday i'm um, um, gonna do some sponsored content with them um so that'll help pay the Pay some bill. Uh, and in that, I'm trying to think, trying to get creative and think about like really awesome ways to use a CNC in my shop that isn't going to make everyone hate me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, somewhere along the line, I got known as, you know, a more hand tool, traditional furniture kind of guy. Yes, I do make very traditional furniture, um, but I'm very much a hybrid wood woodworker. Like I'm going to use whatever tool gets this like i'm not james you know like where i don't have a hand tool shop you're not a luddite like the other um, yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> uh sorry guys um no, so i'm trying to think of like really cool creative ways to make furniture with a cnc that will make people go wow that, that was really cool and in skill uh Anyway, yeah, and uh, and then the other sponsored thing is for tools today. I just started work on the media console that I promised them like a year ago. Um, so I just went and got all the lumber for that. And mill decks. It's going to be a painted project, but I'm really bummed it's going to be painted because after I milled this poplar down, I think poplar is one of the most underrated woods. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, ever like Especially, people people uh, crap rainbow, on it like rainbow poplar. If you ever seen that? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. The greens and purples and cool stuff yep so and like i build this down and there's like some beautiful curl in it and the quarter sawn grain and i'm just man i'm really bummed i have to paint this <laughs> <laughs> but anyway so that's what's going on with me cool uh, well we have a few questions actually came in in the live chat um and one right off the bat uh, scott griffith asks um wipe on poly is my go-to finish for items that come to come into contact with the kids um, do you have any other suggestions for a finish that will not feel so plasticky? Hmm. I actually, um, I, I really have been enjoying hard waxes, uh, particularly uh, Rubio Monocoat. Uh, I really like that. Uh, the, the more I use it, the more I'm like, this is this is a cool finish, and I've been using it more and more because it, it 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 leaves almost no feel to the finish and you feel like you're you're actually in contact with the wood but it is a very protective finish and water beads up on top of it beautifully and that's how i finished my table and just recently i finished uh the wooden countertop that i made and uh, i i love it uh, it's very expensive though but uh, yeah it's uh, very expensive water locks has a similar rub in finish mm-hmm. i've used that on a few projects also i mean uh linseed oil and uh uh you know paste wax or something is, is a... yeah now someone was mentioning in yeah, there shellac um, and paste wax yeah someone was mentioning in there that they use um other oils um uh, particularly olive oil um and i don't remember who posted but there's the, the for some reason a lot of people really fear using olive oil um that was me people that was, say that that was me that <laughs> oh um 
And olive oil goes <laughs> rancid faster than any other oil, or at least most other oils. Um, but it only goes rancid in a liquid form. So if it's sitting in a bottle for months, then it'll go rancid. But if it goes into the wood and polymerizes, it doesn't go rancid because it, it's polymerized. It's no longer active. Um, so using it as a finish is actually um, really good. And it's the same for like um, walnut oil and linseed oil. Uh, they will all go rancid sitting on the shelf, but if you put them into wood, they'll polymerize and, and stay. Um, what about Odie's oil? Uh, I know that's like the hot new stuff on the market right now, and everybody's loving it. Uh, I haven't had a chance to play with it yet. It. I haven't had a chance to play with it either, but apparently it's like the bee's knees, and it's, you know... I've heard good things. I know after it cures... I know after things cure, you know, everything's food safe, um, you know, according to whoever mm -hmm. the FDA or, um, but be like awesome. And it's a, uh, you know, finish. I don't know. Yeah. Scott Hahn just asked, uh, is Ruby on Monocoat okay to apply inside? And yes, um, it's actually no VOCs and smells fantastic. It, it is the like, best uh, smelling fish it ever. It's like caramel apples. Yeah, it is. It, it makes you hungry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it, it's, it's fun. <laughs> I'm gonna have to give that stuff a try. Cool, but yeah, um, other questions are coming in about other oils. Um, whatever, if if it's a natural oil, it will eventually go rancid sitting in a liquid state. Um, but if it polymerizes, it it's a it is no longer active, and uh, will not. So, different things to think about. Uh, we have another question from uh, Jonathan24. I am curious, what is something you wish uh, you? What is something you wish people would stop doing in DIY videos? Um, I can't stand videos where it it takes people forever to get to the point. Just like answering this question. Anything else? <laughs> uh, showing too much sanding. <laughs> uh, I just did a talk about this at Workbench Gun. Um, yeah. Uh, synced with their edits, taking forever to get to the point, uh, showing things that don't lend themselves to the story, uh, you know, like drinking coffee in the middle of a build because you think it's going to make you more personable or something. But it, you go, why are you drinking coffee instead of moving on? Uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? I think that's such a personal question, though, because um, I I personally don't like movies that have a story. Um, I, <laughs> I I really don't like that. I I, I know, what? I know that, that's what you do, but I don't I don't like that as much. <laughs> I want to see more of the the detail step by step items. Um, I like seeing weird things that I've never seen before, and I I find th those even when they're simple items like sanding just done differently or with a different item. Um, I, I find that intriguing. And so that's, I, I watch videos very differently. <laughs> I mean, you can, st you can still have it, you know? Yeah. But I'm saying like when they're, when they're talking about a story for the sake of talking about a story or, you know, the history of this particular thing that I'm building and then we're, I, you know, I can Wait, care less about the Isn't that what you do? <laughs> What's Isn't that? that exactly what you do? Is that what you do? The history of like this plane or the spill plane or well, no, no. I'm like talking about you know like uh, um, uh, when you're when you're trying to make an item into a character, um, uh. and you know talking about the, the 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 family that I got this tree from and I cut it down and I turned it into this and. Um, like on my main oh, video, my, my artistic videos, I, I don't like them as much, but they do great on YouTube. And so I do those because they're kind of like the intro drug. And then people can get into my how-to videos where I spend a lot more gratuitous time showing the individual things. And, and that's, that's what I like. Oh, man. I feel I feel like I've been cheated on or like my, <laughs> my pod actually like me. Oh, man. I mean, that's why everyone's different. And... Uh, Every yeah. video style that I've done, I've had different people say, "Oh, I don't like this about it," and I'll have someone else who will comment, "Oh, I do like that about it." Yeah, it's it's very personal. Like I don't really watch much YouTube at all, um, but 
one of the things i mean like will i like of course every time i talk my dogs go crazy <laughs> um I, I like uh i like the way you do like your narration and voiceover typically i don't like that and i, I don't like there's certain um <clears throat> there's some of them out there that i think come off as kind of like smarmy they, they yeah they have like kind of too much like philosophical yeah. musings and stuff like, and it's like um, I, I don't care about like how you were at the store the other day and you got inspiration for like i don't not not i don't mean that to sound impersonal but that's not like that's not what i want to see and that's that's i mean this is really really that's why i don't watch much youtube is um i like instagram i just want to see the pictures i want to see the design i want to see the ideas i don't um unless it's something where i'm like wow i've thought about this for multiple days and i have no idea how you would possibly build this um i usually don't i usually don't watch uh, a whole lot of youtube and, and instagram gives me that like that satisfaction but i see something I'm like wow that is a cool concept or that is a cool design and then i can try and deconstruct it and and figure out how to do it yeah um and it's you know I, I there there certainly are some some youtube channels i i definitely enjoy but i'm i really don't spend much time on there <clears throat> yeah like um like comparison for me like click spring i i love his style mm -hmm. because he's always showing something slightly different or a different way of thinking through things but things like uh four eyes um chris salamone's uh, i i he has beautiful videos and I love his work. He does some amazing work, but I just can't watch his videos. They I, I just, they drive <laughs> me bonkers. Um, I, and so I, I yeah, I, I subscribe to him and every time a video comes up, I pop it and I, I start watching it in like 30 seconds and I find myself clicking away. Um, I just, yeah, it's not my video style. <laughs> yeah. Like he's, he's not my, he's, he's definitely not my, my style of video, but I think he's one of the best designers out there. Like I, give him credit where oh, it's yeah. due. like he, he builds yeah, he some really, awesome stuff. really great stuff, but yeah, I'm, I, I can't, it's not, it's not the kind of videos that, that I, um, yeah. you know, and then the, the, the thing is that I mean, he, he's doing absolutely great on YouTube. And, and part of that's because there's a large people, out, large number of people out there who really like that style. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's, that's awesome because everyone's different. Everyone has different things that they like. So. Mm. Cool. Um, I think that's the questions we have from the live chat. And uh, so next week we have the, we're going to be doing the creator's photo challenge. And uh, next week we have the golden ratio or the, uh, so you can look phi. that up. Phi? Phi. Yeah, P -A -P -H -I. Oh, yeah. P-H-I. Phi? Uh, so if you want to join in on that, it gives you a great chance to win something from one of the three of us. And I think it's my week next time. And so you'll probably be winning a strop or a card scraper or actually, I think I have another set of chisels that I just got. So maybe I'll be giving those away. Yeah. Um, so oh, I forgot to, I was going to say something earlier. I brought this in here. I, I think I'm going to take a picture of this Damascus Japanese style. I don't think it's quite big enough Ooh. to be a chef's knife, but I think I'm going to auction this off on my Instagram today. So keep your eyes peeled. If this Ooh. is something that you guys are interested in. Nice. Cool. So if you want to join in on the photo challenge, um, all you have to do is put up a picture that fits the format of the golden ratio and hashtag creators photo challenge. And we will pick a winner next week. And if you want to get in on Zach's uh, sale, that knife is absolutely gorgeous. Damascus, Damascus steel shaped like a ch chef's knife with that Japanese style handle. A wall style handle, yeah. That is really, really cool. So yeah, jump in on that. Uh, let's see. We have a joke of the week, which uh, was sent in by Anonymous. Uh, whoever you are, you know. <laughs> uh, this morning, uh, Siri. Uh, this morning, Siri said, uh, "What was I reading?" Okay, here we are. This morning, <laughs> Siri said, "Don't call me Shirley." I accidentally left her on airplane airplane mode. <laughs> Oh, that was terrible. I, I thought and that was pretty good. The, deli <laughs> the delivery was even worse. <laughs> <laughs> so if you'd like uh, to have your question, uh, if you'd like to have a joke of the week told here, uh, feel free to send it in to one of us and we'll add it to the list. And the worse, the better. And don't worry, I will completely mess it up. <laughs> 
Uh, well, let's uh, let's wrap this up with what we're watching, reading. Uh, Will, what you uh, what you've been inspired by? Uh, so my good buddy Sean Boyd, um, he just made a new desk for his shop, uh, and while the style wasn't really my style, um, I'm not really into like plywood furniture, like shaped plywood furniture. Um, but uh, he did something that was probably the cool coolest time uh, where he took the Inventables X-Carve CNC machine and he um, routed out a horizon line in the table for perspective drawing and then filled that with epoxy. And it was like the thing that I've seen done with epoxy and CNC uh, for a purpose. It was like, why didn't I think of that? Um, <laughs> so if, if any of you like to sketch like I do uh, in perspective uh, when you're kind of designing projects or thing, perspective drawing, um, uh, having a horizon line like on the, the desk that you're sketching it on um, to, to set your vanishing points is absolutely brilliant. Uh, so, yeah. I was surprised he did Point. it in white as opposed to something a little darker that might uh, show through the image a little more. Yeah, I, so I, I think I'm going to do something similar like but like a more traditional like drafting table uh -huh. um like super you know like you'd see in 1960s architects office um and do it in black uh yeah to try to like bring it up to the 21st century cool yeah. how about well, how about you James? i have to give a shout out to uh, wintergarten um he is making the uh -huh. marble machine marble machine x um it, do you guys follow that uh no while, i haven't seen yeah. Wintergarten. Uh, he uh, let's say about two years ago put out a viral video showing off the marble machine uh, which is a musical multiple instrument run by a uh, marbles dropping kind of a cool concept but the actual implementation of the machine he made was um horrible <laughs> it was just it was it was um quickly put together and poorly designed but uh, barely functional uh, and so his intention was to make something that is very functional very reliable that he can take on tour and it is this beautiful huge monstrosity that is engineered within an inch of its life and absolutely gorgeous uh, so i've been following him religiously every time he puts up a video i'm, I'm instantly watching it um, but beautiful system and amazing ideas he has a team of like 40, 50 people engineering on this and come up with some very uh, inspirational ideas and fixes to problems. And so I, I like watching that and seeing how it's coming together. But a, a cool, cool video all around. So, Zach, are you still reading that Anvil book? Uh, yes, actually. Um, but <laughs> I'm actually going to give a shout out to one of my friends locally here, uh, Derek Ons. Um, he, he, he went to a lot of people might have met him at workbench con. He was up there, but, um, I just posted his Instagram in the, in the chat thing here. He is coming up on a thousand followers and he actually just did a stool that I thought was really cool. Uh, a couple days ago, you can find it back on his timeline. It's, um, it's a, a wooden top and it's three legs and he split, he welded a bunch of, um, flat stock together at the bottom and then it kind of splays out and insets into the the wood piece i just thought it was a really cool design so um yeah that's my shout out for the week very cool, cool. and i love that he was in one I met of him. pictures cool using our, our keller theory shirt that he made for us yes yeah cool uh well do you have a, a product of the week um i don't think so well, you know what? I'm going to go with the, uh, what's the little, like, uh, um, little squares, little construction squares. You know what I'm talking about? Speed squares? Uh, speed square? The Swanson no, speed no, that's a good square? one too. But the, uh, the, the, like, it has like the 90 and the 45 on it. I don't know why I can't think of the name of it. Little sliding ones. And speed square? Oh, the combination square. Yes. Combination square. Why couldn't I think of that? Um, I have like six of those and I need like six more because I just, it's like one of those vanishing tools. Um, they're super useful. So that's going to be mine. I used to love those things. I don't okay. anymore. Cool story. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, I don't know why. Uh, it's one of those no. weird things I was thinking about the other day. And I, I had, I used to have like five or six of them in the shop, and now I don't have a single one. And I, I'm um, not quite sure um, why, but I just stopped reaching for them. I mean, I have fancier I ones, like them. but uh, most of the stuff that I'm doing with like metal work and just just mm -hmm. cutting and roughing stuff out, it's perfectly. You know, I'm not I'm not looking for. I have some a nice stare at one that I only take out of the box if I oh. really, really, really need, <laughs> need something to line up. I used to like them um, for like laying out, you know, something at two and three eighths of an inch across like a rip, you know, uh, you know, along the edge of marking out, you know, three quarters of a piece of plywood on a cabinet carcass or something like that. But um, the locking screw mechanism, the, the locking nut, I found doesn't like totally secure the. I've got three of them, and each one of them does it and doesn't like lock that rule in place, um, like like really really securely. So if you put any kind of pressure on it, like you know if you're just trying to like you know it might shift an eighth of an inch or something, um, and that drives me nuts. Interesting. Well, Will, what uh, what are you? What, uh, what's your favorite product of the week? I uh, gotta go with my Carter and Sons uh, Two Works Five Eighth Inch Bowl Gouge mm. that I swept back grind on. Uh, it's that the weight of the handle really gives you confidence turning, um, and you don't feel like the vibrations in the handle like like a wood handle. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, I gotta go with that one. Cool. Well, I've got to actually um, say one of the things that I, I use in the background, I've had it now for two or three years, is uh, YouTube Premium. It used to be called YouTube Red. And I absolutely love it. Um, not only does it eliminate all ads from YouTube, but you also get access to Google Music, um, which is my, my favorite music source. Um, I find their algorithm to be absolutely top-notch. Um, and I, I just I just enjoy how integrated it is with everything else. But you get that. You get also YouTube premium videos, and there's a bunch of um, shows that have actually been coming out on YouTube. They're, they're full series shows that are available only to YouTube premium members. So it's a pretty cool service for $11 a month, and uh, I, I absolutely love it. So, yeah, that's what I've got to say. It is every time I go into an account, like every time I log into the Creators Collective account, I don't have YouTube Premium on that, and so it drives me crazy because if I watch anything now, I have ads I have to watch, and it's like, oh, I hate these things. Where did these come from? <laughs> so I, I, I don't watch ads anymore. It, it's rather impressive how much that uh, it it cleans up YouTube. So I think that's uh, about it for this week. All right, missing anything? I don't think I am. I'm empty. Cool. So if you want to uh, join us live, you can watch on YouTube, the Creators Collective YouTube channel. We record live every Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Or you can listen to us uh, wherever you listen to your podcasts. If you have any questions you'd like to send to us, uh, go feel free to send it to one of us and we will get it on the list. So I think that's about it for this week. And until next time, have a wonderful day. See you guys later. Adios.